Greetings, Marsh here, and welcome to episode 56 of my modded Factorio playthrough. In this episode, we're going to take the batteries that we've just made and turn those into accumulators. Enjoy! Okay, now we can make the high-capacity accumulators, and we'll be doing that with the output of batteries. So we'll just go with high-capacity accumulators here. Then link it with the input of our 2.7 batteries, and we need 3.5 machines. Although, let's go here. And let's change this to element and say 2.1, because that's how much we have. So I want to get an exact number here. Okay, so 2.9. So we need uh, three assembly machines. Well, three machines is a pretty simple setup. Angel's power. There's all our accumulators. We want the high capacity one. Let's put some chests out here. Although, due to the quantity of these, we're probably going to need steel chests. And these operate very slowly. So a single inserter will do the job. And that's basically it. Not much to it. Let's put it in here, and let's just line it up with the other machine so it looks straight. We'll definitely want a circuit network on all of this. Let's set the enabled condition. Our high capacity accumulators, let's say less than 50. We will calculate in a bit exactly how many we need. It's probably going to be a great deal. Okay. Batteries and iron. So which belt should batteries go on? Well, probably just right below plastic here. So we come up and over. And then kind of come right back down here. See, that's kind of in the way. But we can come in through here. Well, kind of. There we go. Got to think outside the box sometimes. And let's get a light in here. See how these run. They're probably pretty slow machines, so not too much is going to happen here, yeah. But they easily keep up. And for this, we can use the solar calculator mod here, which makes calculating exactly how much of anything you need quite convenient. So with clockwork, I have it set up to where Sunrise is 90 seconds, day is 810, sunset's 90, and night is 810. That's exactly how I had it, nice and balanced. And then this amount of solar power you get, which is 100% when the sun's up, and also the day to night ratio, and that's exactly 50%, so half the day is night and half the day is sun. And then as far as what solar panels you have, you can do take count from surface, which counts everything you have in your network right now. And that's uh, 1080, 1088 of each panel. And then it calculates exactly what the peak power is of all those panels. Or 145 megawatts. And that just about matches what we have, where about half... The, it's weird because we have both of our solar panels and coal generators connected here. So... It says 311, but that's about right, because half of that is the solar panels, and the other half are the solid fuel burners. 
burning our tree products right now in charcoal. So that about makes sense. And that's our peak power right now, but that's not our average power, so you see how the desired power is exactly half of peak power. Because our solar panels need to be twice as powerful as the average amount of power we want, because they have to charge the batteries during the daytime. Hey, let's get another one. I think we're almost done with the red science here. But we actually don't want peak power to be 145. We want the average power to be that. So we'll change this to 145 megawatts. And now this tells us exactly how many gigajoules we're going to need in our accumulator network in order to power our base for 145 megawatts maximum for nighttime. So let's put some batteries in there. We want the high capacity accumulator. And then we hit this button here, and it puts the data that we've selected back into the calculations. So for average power of 145 megawatts, we need a peak power of 290 and about 124 gigajoules, or 12,403 <laughs> high capacity accumulators. Now because we're using two different types of panels, uh, this data is a little less useful. We'll have to calculate exactly how many solar panels we want. But we do know that we need 290 megawatts. And each of our setups uses 16 small panels and 16 large panels. And doing the math there, it's about 2.14 megawatts per one of these. So if the total power we need is 290, we can do 290 divided by each one of our patterns, which produces 2.14, means we need 135, or let's say 136 patterns. And since each pattern uses 16 panels each, we could do 136 times 16 panels each. So we need 2,176 of each panel type. And that about matches here, where if we had this, the right amount of smalls with the right amount of larges, we would have that. So we go back to our network, and we have 1,000 something, I believe it was 1,088. So we already have the 1,088, so we take away that. And we're left with 1,088, which makes sense, because we're basically doubling the setup again. So we can take that number. Hope that made sense. Sorry, I know that solar panels can get a little complicated, and I hope that uh, at least the solar power calculator mod helps make it a little easier than having to do all of that math by hand. But the great thing about the mod is it just takes into account your current settings. So this math only works with my game here because I set the day-night cycle in a certain way. If you set it in your way or you're playing with a vanilla day-night cycle, these numbers are all different. Not to mention that I did not adjust the capacity of the accumulators for the longer day-night cycle. I'm using the original numbers and with clockwork it lets you select if you want to buff the accumulators for the longer day cycle or not and i don't so it makes sense that it would require an enormous amount of accumulators let's go in here and we'll say 1088 that go. And additionally, the last thing we learned from this is that we need 12,403. Although that's kind of a weird number, so let's make a pattern with it and see how many patterns we would need. Well, it would be nice if we could use the same pattern with this. 
I could place the accumulators inside this pattern and have a nice balanced pattern to where there's the perfect number of solar panels and the perfect number of accumulators, and we would just build these over and over again as we needed more power. But I'm actually going to keep the accumulators separate from the solar panels because we're going to need to have some logic. We don't want the accumulators to always be at 100% because then there won't be any room for the byproducts to get burned. So for example, all of this hydrogen can only be burned if there's actually room in the electrical network for it to do so. So if the solar panels are keeping the accumulators completely topped off, these hydrogen burners are going to be fighting for the ability to basically output their product. So with the perfect electrical network, we wouldn't ever need to use any of this. And it might seem kind of wasteful that we're basically inventing a reason to burn off these byproducts because we don't need it for the electricity. The problem is, is we just need to get rid of it. And the alternative is using a flare stack, but a flare stack is, it produces a lot of pollution, certainly the easy way out. But I would rather get rid of it the proper way than, and actually get something out of it. Like I would prefer to get the electricity out of it than just throw it away completely. So for that to work, we're going to need to have some room in the accumulators at all times. We don't want them to be full. So the only way to do that is to not have the accumulators part of the solar panel network and to use a circuit network to cut them off as necessary. So we can't just put these accumulators in where we want. See, if we put them here, they wouldn't be connected. So you see how I do that and it's nothing? But then if I do that, it is connected. So actually placing these in here is going to be a little complicated. Yeah, the problem is these gaps between the poles. So if the poles are at maximum distance like this, you can't really put an accumulator in the middle. You can kind of put them between the lines like right here to get some additional space. But then when you get to the bottom here, you can't do that anymore. So it has to go up like this. Let's get some light in here. Oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> accumulators charge. That's how accumulators work. Oh well. It's kind of wasting power a little bit to do that, but... Let's see. I think that ought to work. Ignore the light right there. But because of the shape of them, we can't quite fill up these last little uh, squares in there because they just won't fit with the wire reach. But this should work as a pattern, so let's try it out and see. And some lights. So it should connect on the side and it works. You see how the wire reach isn't the maximum, but the problem is, is there's just no room for batteries in there because the, the electrical reach isn't far enough. The wires will go that far, but the electric connection does not. And it will slot in right here. And it slots in right there. And then on this side, it works too. Let's create a new pattern for this. Let's get rid of the light there. That's fine. We'll create that. And we can plop it in our book. Now we can put those accumulators back in there. Now that we have a pattern here, we can calculate exactly how many of them we're going to need. So the pattern consists of 62 accumulators. And this is the ideal number. So we take our ideal number of 12,403 divided by our pattern, which has 62. 
So we need 200 patterns, basically. So 200 patterns times 62. 12,400. So we go here and say 12,400. And now those are going to work tirelessly and give us lots and lots of accumulators. So I wonder how all of our sulfur's doing. Ah, well, I am happy to report that we have used up all of the byproduct sulfur that we made from making phosphoric acid. And also we've cleared out all of the sulfur dioxide gas. So now we're down to using sulfur from coal. And coal is finally starting up again because of that. So basically what this means is anything we need to use carbon for or coke for, which is a lot of these processes here, as long as there's room in the warehouse for sulfur, we will be generating it. And that's kind of what happening, is happening here. It's not running at full power because it doesn't need to. It's just doing what it needs to in order to fill up and keep sulfuric acid full. Excellent. That is going quite well. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how long that's going to take to build. Probably a very, very long time. And we'll worry about the circuit network to control the batteries when we get to that point. So what else can we do here? Not much. We're getting pretty close to sorting here. But there is one more metal that we can make. And that's Invar. Which, if we combine our steel and nickel, we'll be able to make invar plates. And as you can see, that goes into quite a few things. Some of which we won't really be able to take advantage of because it also requires white circuits. Or blue science or anything like that. But some things it will be able to upgrade. Like making the bigger storage tanks. Now we already have the big ones with angels, but this is just another type of tank we can use. And honestly, the progression of these smaller tanks probably makes more sense than the angels ones do. And we're just going to have to watch this plastic output. Because if this clogs up, it clogs up. And it looks like it's already clogged up. <laughs> so we're full of mineral oil. We've probably been burning off a little bit of fuel oil. And naphtha is going down. Hmm. Yeah, we might have to do a separate type of plastics processing. Or just find a way to bottle up the mineral oil. That might be the smarter option. However, we're going to save that for the next episode. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.